a heavy door that is a androgen receptor that is not very sensitive, it is very difficult to open. In the room, you can have a different number of doors. That's the density of the androgen receptor that we were talking about. It can be upregulated with testosterone. That's why you know you have more testosterone. That's that positive feedback mechanism. Um, and that uh, is one of the main reasons why in uh, young children, uh, you know, a two month old, a relatively high amount of androgen can help, um, you know, you have uh, increased secondary sexual characteristics even very early on in newborns because they have that spike in androgens that helps increase the density of the androgen receptor. I don't need to rabbit trail too much on that, but to continue with the analogy, you have the heavy door, that's high CAG repeat, then you have a medium door, medium CAG repeat, and then you have a very light door, a tiny hollow core wood door, even a mouse could open it. DHEA might be that mouse, and a lot of women with PCOS. Sarms so are interesting as well, uh, as they're obviously um, androgen receptor agonists, or antagonists, um, but they are non-steroidal. Yeah, and there is the SARM study, uh, which specifically will note one study, one person that involved a muscle biopsy. And we actually saw a down-regulation of androgen receptors in the muscle, which is the opposite of what you see with just testosterone administration or oxandrolone administration. Um, androgens seem to upregulate their own receptors, but with SARMs, or at least this one case with this one SARM and this one biopsy, uh, for whatever reason, we saw the inverse opposite effect. Yeah, so the takeaway should not be always do a test base with your SARM cycle, it should be don't do SARMs. Um, but there's certainly therapeutic potential for SARMs, um, mostly due to their properties as an androgen antagonist in the prostate and in breast tissue for individuals with prostate cancer and breast cancer. There is um, larger trials than one person um, for those. Yeah, and these are mostly in you know mice models. And something that I think is very entertaining to think about, or at least makes me chuckle, is that somewhere out there, there is a SARM that is a antagonist in muscle and an agonist in scalp skin. So you have small, bald rats who didn't get any positives, but only side effects. Yeah, Sustanchi. Yeah, they lost all their muscle and lost all their hair. Uh, um, by the way, we do not know that Sustanchi is a SARM. We know that in some tissues, it is an androgen receptor antagonist. Almost all the studies are mouse studies. I guess you could say in like the functional health, um, SARM, hormone optimization community, their mascot should be Mickey Mouse because it's all mouse studies. It's all based on rodent data. <laughs> but, um, uh, but I guess you give the analogy a lot of time that I really like about the, if we just compare DHEA to testosterone to DHT, um, and think about a signal like pushing open a door. Yep. Uh, do you care to walk people through that? Yeah. Um, a heavy door that is a androgen receptor that is not very sensitive, it is very difficult to open. In the room, you can have a different number of doors. That's the density of the androgen receptor that we were talking about. It can be upregulated with testosterone. That's why you know you have more testosterone. That's that positive feedback mechanism. Um, and that uh, is one of the main reasons why in... Uh, young children, uh, you know, a two month old, a relatively high amount of androgen can help, um, you know, you have uh, increased secondary sexual characteristics even very early on in newborns because they have that spike in androgens that helps increase the density of the androgen receptor. I don't need to rabbit trail too much on that, but to continue with the analogy, you have the heavy door, that's high CAG repeat, then you have a medium door, medium CAG repeat, and then you have a very light door, a tiny hollow core wood door, even a mouse could open it. DHEA might be that mouse. In a lot of women with PCOS, there's mosaicism. Um, in humans with two X chromosomes, there are two androgen receptors and two CAG repeats. And in PCOS, especially in the ovary and the skin and in, in scalp skin as well, the more sensitive androgen receptor is almost always the one that is active. In those corresponding tissues, so you yep. have the same CAG repeat, the same androgen activity in the ovary, same androgen activity that you have in your scalp skin. So it's sort of, you know, the, a very unfortunate setup, but that's the way that it tends to kind of shake out. Yeah. So uh, to continue with that analogy, you have DHT, that is a strong androgen, that's like world's strongest man, Thor or um, Brian Shaw, someone like that. They can't. They're strong enough to punch open that door. That's why you see. Some individuals that are on 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, they have less of the world's strongest man. They just have normal guys, testosterone. Um, 
you know, DHEA that might be a baby or a mouse um, that might grow up to be testosterone, but <laughs> is not testosterone uh, to start with. But it's strong enough, at least in the liver, to decrease SHBG, especially in individuals with very high SHBG. In fact, I think we used to say DHEA is just a supplement, but um, prostrone at some point, I believe even in the US, was used to treat um, low libido in females. Yeah, yeah, and in androgen insensitivity, that that DHT, which is like you said, Brian Shaw, world's yep. strongest man. Uh, if you don't have the sensitivity, I mean that that door is proportionally stronger and harder to open, so the DHT can be behaving like a child. It's not going to help with secondary sexual characteristics in someone with androgen insensitivity. Uh, so DHT certainly won't make you childlike or more youthful. Uh, it perhaps the opposite if we think of things like hair loss, definitely prostate growth. Um, but I guess too much DHT at the amygdala could make your impulses more childlike. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, and it's actually in the prefrontal cortex as well uh, could be. So the ideal situation is not high DHT. Um, the ideal situation is that whatever combination of androgens, whatever androgen cocktail or pool that you have, that that is strong enough to normally open receptors at a um, medium physiologic dose in all tissues, or depending on your goals, perhaps slightly more in some tissues, like uh, your muscle in your body and slightly less in some tissues, like the uh, skin on your scalp.